This is a, a suction trap. It's uh, basically a giant upside down vacuum cleaner. It's 12.2 uh, metres tall. Any insect that's unfortunate enough to fly over the top uh, gets sucked down the tube. So let's go and have a look and see what's in the bottle. Turn the fan off so you can hear me. So this is one of uh, 15 traps like this around the UK that have been operated now for 50 years. Uh, they're designed primarily uh, to study aphids, which are one of the country's most important agricultural pests. And the trap was emptied earlier this morning, a couple of hours ago. But even so, I can see that there are quite a few insects in there, including uh, several aphids. And these samples from this trap and from the other 14 in the country uh, are all identified in our laboratory, which we'll go and have a look at in, in, in just a moment. I'm looking at uh, a sample from one of the, our traps and i am been picking out aphids from our sample. They're quite and I'm also noting whether our samples have ladybirds, lacewings, hoverflies and things like that. So I'm just looking through and just checking the catch and then afterwards, once I've pulled all the aphids out, I'll then identify them individually. So the traps uh, pick up the winged forms of these aphids and of all other insects. And what we're really all about is providing uh, information to the agricultural industry on what uh, pest species of aphid there are about, where they are, uh, whether or not they're resistant to insecticides. In other words, which insecticides will work and which ones won't, uh, whether they're carrying viruses. But as well as these more immediately applied aspects of the work, uh, the data are used for a very wide range of uh, studies span spanning the full sort of fundamental to applied uh, spectrum. We identify every species, aphid species, that we get in our, our sample and then we put it into a database and that gets stored and we keep all the aphids and the insects afterwards as well. The uh, Rothamsted Insect Survey then is uh, a BBSRC national capability. It comprises two networks of traps. We have the big uh, suction traps here, 12 metres tall, which are primarily for studying aphids, but cover a, a range of other agricultural pests as well. Uh, we also have a network of light traps that are specifically for monitoring and understanding changes in moth populations. This is a Rothamsted Insect Survey light trap designed by C.B. Williams back in the 1930s. So they, if I just open the trap up and have a look, show you what. So this is a pretty standard summer catch. You can see there's plenty of moths in there. There's a few dark arches I can see and some footman moths. So moths are likely to be quite good pollinators. Uh, however, there's not really been done the work done on them to know quite Im how important they are um, in, our, in our environment as pollinating species, partly because of the difficulty in surveying nocturnal animals in general. So that's a pretty standard sample. In any one year we have 80 to 100 traps running. The vast majority of them are run by volunteers. Uh, and most of them are also identified by volunteers, not necessarily the same people. So there's around about 70 or 80 vol voluntary workers that, do our, that provide all the data for us. So with 50 years worth of data, it's possible to really get a deep understanding of what makes uh, aphid populations go up and down. And I think uh, the biggest impact uh, of the work is in the forecasting uh, of the timing and size of insect populations, aphid populations in particular, uh, which really does uh, help growers to determine uh, the need for control uh, and it saves them spraying or using uh, in insecticides at planting if they don't need to do so.
do you have to uh, love insects to do this job? I think it helps. <laughs> it does help. But looking down a microscope, some of them are fascinating. They beautiful colours and and um, yeah, markings. Uh, yeah, you just can't not not admire some of them. Some of them are very beautiful.